Today we will discuss the in situ or field density determination test. So in the previous experiment, we conducted the standard proctor test where we determine the maximum dry density and the optimum moisture content test. Because of the differences between lab and field compaction methods, the maximum dry density in the field may reach 90 to 95 percent. So the relative compaction means how much the soil in the field is compacted with respect to the maximum dry density obtained from the standard proper test. So there are several correlations between the relative compaction and relative density. Typical required relative compaction is 90 to 95 percent. But if it's more than 95 percent, it's okay. So where and when we should conduct the in-situ density determination test? Typical specifications call for a new field test for every 1000 to 3000 meter square. So it depends on the project size. If the project is huge, then we need to do the field density test frequently. If it's a small project, then we need to do the field density test occasionally. And also it depends on the quality of the borometrial. So if the property of the borometrial changes significantly, then we need to do the field density test. So there are several methods to determine the in situ density. So we can divide the methods into two categories, destructive and non-destructive methods. So there are uh, many non-destructive method, methods. Among them, the most popular method is nuclear density method. So the mechanism of the nuclear density method is that there is a source from where the gamma rays will be emitted and there is a detector which can detect the gamma rays, that means which can detect the electrons or electron counts. So there will be interaction of the electron with the field soil. So if the density of the soil is higher, then there will be more interaction which will lead to the reduction of the energy of the gamma rays. If the density is the lower, the reduction of the energy will be less. So depending on the electron counts, the nuclear density machine can easily determine the in situ density. So if the detector count actually it is inversely proportional to the field density. The major problem of these non-destructive methods are the cost. So the cost of the equipment is much higher. That's why if the equipment is not available, then we need to go for the destructive methods. The destructive methods will damage the pavement or the in situ soil condition, but it's very cost effective. So there are different methods like a sand cone, balloon or oil method. So in these methods, we need to dig or excavate a hole and then we need to fill the hole either with sand or air or oil. So if we fill the hole with sand, then we need to do the sand cone test. And if we fill the hole with air, so there will be some pressurized air which will be in connection with the balloon. So it will determine the volume of the hole. And if there is liquid, so if we know the density of the liquid and the weight of the liquid, so you can easily determine the volume of the hole. So in these destructive methods, we dig a hole, we will weigh the removed soil, that is MS, and then we need to determine the volume of that hole with these methods. If we know the weight, if we know the volume, then weight area volume is the density. So let's start the procedure of this test. So at first, we need to obtain the unit weight of the sand used. So in the sand cone method, we usually use the auto sand for its unique properties. The auto sand, the grain size is almost constant and the properties of the auto sand 
will remain unchanged because of its range size distribution. So we will use the standard proctor mold. At first, we will wet the empty mold. Then we will fill that mold with sand in a loose condition. And then again, we will wet the filled mold. With that difference, we will determine the weight of the soil in the mold. And for the standard proctor mold, the volume of the mold is constant. So therefore, we can easily determine the dry unit weight of the sand we are using and after that we need to calibrate the sand cone device so in the sand cone device there are two parts one part is the funnel shaped cone and the another part is the gallon plastic gallon so we need to place the sand cone device in a plane surface then we'll open this valve so the sand will be filled in that cone and then again we will close the valve so we need to determine the weight before use and after use so the difference is the weight of the sand to fill the cone after that we will go to the field we will dig a hole we will collect the removed soil and then we will determine the weight of this removed soil and after this we will take some of the soil for moisture content determination so we will know the how much weight of the soil is removed and what is the moisture content of the soil and then we need to determine the volume so for determination of the volume we will use a sand cone device we will place the device we will open the valve and then the sand will be filled in this hole and also the cone so from the previous calibration we already know how much sand will be in the cone so if we know the weight of the sand cone device before use and after use then we can easily determine the weight of the sand in in this hole so if we divide the weight with the density we obtained from previously then we can easily determine the volume of the hole and if we know the weight of the removed soil, the volume of the soil, then the moist unit well is just the weight divided by volume. And also we already determined the moisture content of the soil. And then from this equation, we can easily determine the dry density of the in-situ soil condition. And then we can compare this dry density with the result of the standard proctor test therefore we can comment on the relative compaction of the soil so a sample data will be uploaded in the canvas so you need to work on that data and you need to determine the dry unit weight in the field and the relative compaction and the lab report is like the previous ones you need to work on that data and you need to submit the lab report so that's it for today thank you see you next week